welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at three different cases. One where a police officer repeatedly punched a driver during a traffic stop. Another where officers used excessive force contributing to a detained man's death. And lastly, where famous filmmaker Ryan Coogler was wrongfully detained after trying to withdraw cash from a bank while filming in Atlanta. On March 25, 2019, in a city called Grand Rapids in the state of Michigan, officers from the local police department spotted a vehicle speeding near National Avenue Northwest and California Street Northwest. The driver was later identified as 24-year-old Bronkel Brown, who, before the stop, was pulling into the driveway of his mother's house with his child in the back seat. After catching up to the vehicle and halting the driver, Officer Drew Rao and his partner began conducting a traffic stop. How's it going? Good, I'm Officer Stevens. Stop for speeding today. I'm full. Do you have your license I'm registration? I'm with the church. You are? What's the speed limit? It's 25. How fast do you think you're going? Okay, I was doing 35 and I couldn't catch you. So that's hey, I don't think we're fast. I'm okay, sure. well, that's between you, me, the video, and my speedometer. So, you get your license, registration, proof of insurance? I don't know my license. Why is that? Whose house is this right here? Listen to me. Stop huh? digging around and listen to me. I'm looking for the, the, the stuff for you. Okay, well, I need to know your name because you're driving a vehicle. Why do I have stuff on the car? You don't have your license on you, you're under arrest. I'm under arrest. You don't have your license on you, it's a misdemeanor in the state of Michigan. That's not, that's not a misdemeanor. Okay, step out of the car. Why do I have stuff on the car? If you don't step out of the car, you'll be charged with hindering a poser. I didn't do that. My son is in the car right Okay, here, great. So. I'm glad you know the law. Step out of the car. You're now you're under arrest for refusing. You're refusing to obey a lawful command. Now you're under arrest. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. I'm gonna bust the window and drag you out. I'm gonna bust you out. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. You're under arrest. Step out of the car. You're under arrest. I'm gonna break the window. I'm gonna break the window. Step out of the car. 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 Step out of the car! Step out of the car! Step out of the car! Get son of Open here. the car! What the f is Open the door! door. You're under arrest! Oh, we don't hear! Open the door! What? Open the door! Grab me! Open the Grab me! Step out of the car! You're under arrest! Let me see your hands! Step out of the car! You're under arrest! Step out of the car! You're under arrest! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Show me your other hand! Show me your hands! Show me your hands! Show me your hands! It's important to note here that a police officer may violate your constitutional rights by pointing a gun at you, even if only for a couple of seconds. For instance, an officer may be allowed to point a gun when there is a genuine threat to the officer or bystander. For example, if a suspect is holding a weapon, an officer likely acts lawfully by pointing his gun. This is further warranted as the use of force policy issued by the Grand Rapids Police Department states that officers may draw and display weapons only, one, when there is fear for the safety of the officer or the safety of others, two, for inspections and authorized training exercises, three, as authorized by any other department procedures, orders, or proper authority. However, in this situation, Mr. Brown, while refusing to leave the vehicle, was not in any way a threat to the officer's safety. Hence, the officer's use of intimidating the victim with his firearm was blatantly illegal. Exit the vehicle! Exit the vehicle! Exit the vehicle! Exit the vehicle! He's got a kid in the back seat. Exit the vehicle! Exit the vehicle! Exit the vehicle! Exit the vehicle! Open this door. Exit the vehicle. I'm about to get out. Let me get out. Put your hands up. Let me get out. Put your hands up. You're going to get tased. You don't get out.
You're gonna get it again! As ridiculous as it sounds, Officer Rao punched the victim in his leg repeatedly 29 times. The officers violated their police department's use of force policy since the victim was still in his car, unable to leave, and wasn't threatening or using violence on the officers present. Furthermore, not only did they unjustly assault the victim, but they also did so in front of a minor. Despite being police officers, they broke the law and were subject to violating Michigan Law Statute 750.81. A person who assaults or assaults and batters an individual, if no other punishment is prescribed by law, is guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by imprisonment for not more than 93 days or a fine of not more than $500 or both. Fortunately, after this, Officer Rao was placed on administrative leave in March while the department opened an internal affairs investigation. Moreover, the Michigan State Police Department reviewed the case and presented its findings to the Kent County Prosecutor's Office to determine if criminal charges were necessary. Following this, the Kent County Prosecutor reviewed the case and decided not to file charges against Mr. Brown. On November 29, 2022, in the north of Texas, a 41-year-old by the name of Kenneth Knotts was on a road trip from Austin with his girlfriend and two sons. However, during the trip, agitated with reckless drivers and his tire blowing out, he stood on top of his vehicle and began acting erratically and combatively. Officers detained him and took him to UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. Moreover, only a few moments later, he began running away from there. UT Southwestern police then chased Mr. Knotts, who suffered from paranoia, and handcuffed him while struggling to get him inside a police car, according to the report police filed with the Attorney General's office. After doing so, they took him back to the hospital and seated him on a bed with both his hands in cuffs. Thirsty, the detained man tried to get up and grab some water. However, it was due to this action that everything went out of control. Officers turned him on his stomach and proceeded to add more constraints or adjust those already on him. A Dallas police report later stated that officers said there were two sets of handcuffs on Mr. Knotts. However, it's important to note that the officers present used a lot more force than necessary to detain the victim. According to Texas's use of force policy, officers shall use only that amount of force that reasonably appears necessary given the facts and circumstances perceived by the officer at the time of the event to accomplish a legitimate law enforcement purpose. The reasonableness of force will be judged from the perspective of a reasonable officer on the scene at the time of the incident. Judging by this, all officers present were definitely liable to face charges for breaking the policies of their own police department. Stop! Stop! 
You're hurting your own self. Stop. What do you want? What do you want? Quit kicking, dude. It's open. Let go of my hand. 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 What's more is that the victim yells out that he cannot breathe and winces in pain multiple times. According to UCLA's police department laws on the use of force, reportable force is significant when it involves complaint of pain or injury resulting from use of force. In instances of significant force, the watch commander or immediate supervisor shall do the following. Locate and interview all potential witnesses including department personnel and document his or her statements, including those who could have witnessed but claim not to have witnessed the incident. In situations involving very large numbers of potential witnesses, the watch commander or in the case of an OIS force shooting response team response, the OIS team supervisor shall determine the appropriate scope of the witness canvas necessary to sufficiently document the force incident. Photograph the scene and conditions as near as possible to those at the time of the force incident, if appropriate. The officer's failure to follow this procedure further shows their incompetence in being able to handle the situation. Fearing for his life, Mr. Knotts continued to resist the officers and tried to place himself in a position where their actions wouldn't result in his death. You got him? You got him? You good? What, what you trying to do, Lever? Nothing worse. Okay, okay. 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 They're trying, relax, they're trying to trap on his feet. <laughs> Kenneth, stop. Stop. I don't know. Stop. Just behave. Okay. We got a relaxing over here. We got a dumpling over here. Okay. Just a new goal. Can't stop. All right. You can watch yourself here, buddy. All right. All right. You good? One, two, and. That's fine, dude. Left blue. Okay. So we have a little bit of 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 well, then we'll are have we to take this off. Oh, yeah, we're we going to cuff Tony. No, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. So, let's, let's put them let's on the bed. Let's put bed on our side, and then once we can get the cuffs off, we can roll them over and start with this. After Mr. Knotts became unresponsive, the officers thought they did a job well done and discussed what to do next with hospital staff, unsure whether to remove the restraints and handcuffs. After deciding to roll them onto the bed, the officers left the room for the infirmary to complete the task. However, upon inspecting Mr. Knotts, one of the nurses made a horrifying discovery. No pulse. No pulse. Rapid 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 Here, 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 Days after Kenneth Price, father of Kenneth Knott, saw his son for the last time, he got a call. After hearing what the caller had to tell him, he began calling each of his kids. Two responded, and one did not. I knew right then, Price said, it was my oldest son, and they killed him. Sadly, Mr. Knott died due to the actions of the officers present. 
The Dallas County Medical Examiner's Office determined the death was a homicide and that Knotts had a cardiac arrest associated with physical restraint and semi-prone position. Despite this, in late 2023, a grand jury declined to indict the officers on criminal charges. Knott's family rallied outside the hospital in February, demanding the release of the body camera video. Then, many months later, an attorney retained by the Knott's family filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against the UT system, where he said he had fought for over a month to obtain the same footage the family already tried fighting for. Unfortunately, the lawsuit did not come to fruition, and the Knott's family has yet to get the closure they need. On January 7, 2022, in Atlanta, Georgia, director Ryan Coogler, maker of the Oscar-winning movie Black Panther, was filming the sequel Black Panther Wakanda Forever. During his stay in the city, he entered a Bank of America to withdraw some funds. However, scared of the attention both he and the large sum of money would bring, he went in dressed in a hoodie, a beanie, sunglasses, and a mask and used a red note to portray his request. Upon approaching the teller, Mr. Coogler would slide the note to her which read, I would like to withdraw $12,000 cash from my checking account. Please do the money count somewhere else. I'd like to be discreet. It's important to note that since Bank of America does not have a set withdrawal limit at the counter, it may be possible to withdraw the entirety of your account balance. Hence, Mr. Coogler was technically capable of withdrawing such an enormous lump of cash. Startled and confused, however, the teller started thinking that he was a bank robber. Soon enough, she started to call her manager who in turn called the police after hearing her account of the situation. Police then arrived at the bank and spotted Mr. Coogler still there waiting for his cash. Hey, sir. Hey, man. Do me a favor, man. Come this way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put your hand back. Look, he's not on back. Okay. Got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Is there any reason you're doing this, bro? Give me one second. Hold yeah. on. Is that him with the grades, right? No, sir. Two or four, whatever. Fellas, fellas, I really shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? What's going on, my man? I'm trying to throw money on my arm. You said what? Trying yeah, what's up? This your phone? It is, sir. Good job, man. After letting his partner escort the detained victim to the police vehicle, the officer began walking over to the manager to get a synopsis of the situation and what was really going on. Listen closely to their conversation. You? Okay, what's going on? All right, so tell me what's going on. That's the same guy, correct? Right? That's the guy, okay. I want to give you the note, but I'm going to put it in. Yeah, put it in. Take $12,000 out of my checking account. Um, and I want you to count it somewhere else, and I want this to be And my name is Rudy, I'm sorry. I'm not going to have to it for me. And I'm going to be a count of this, a lot of some, some, some stuff going on. Mm -hmm. that oh, a large amount of money or something? I mean, I can quickly check with the teller. She's in the back. Oh, the teller is in the back there? Yeah. Oh. The manager told the officer that he could take him to speak with the teller who could give her testimony. The officer agreed and was then shortly taken to speak with her. Pregnant, so I just want to keep her calm as possible. Oh, okay. Oh, so she is. Yeah, okay. come on back. Okay. She was yeah, she, uh, No, but I want to keep her calm. Gotcha. Yeah, she just has some. It's, yeah. You put it in a, a bag. Yeah, he had the debit card, he inserted his debit card, it went through, he put in the PIN number, 
as he was putting in the pin number, I was reading the note, and the note said, I wanted to draw 12,000 be discreet. And so when he said be discreet, I'm like, should I say anything or should I open my door? I don't know. So then I said, okay, can I see your ID? He handed me a California ID, but my stomach was like so shook up, I didn't even look at his okay. name. Hold on one second. Despite whether or not the situation was frightening, the woman was negligent in her duties as a bank teller. Mr. Kugler had already correctly entered his banking information along with a correct PIN, something no bank robber would do. Moreover, the bank teller did not verify his name or information on the ID before immediately calling the police. Due to her carelessness, the police were involved and an innocent man was detained for no reason. During the conversation in the bank, the officers with the victim then learned of his identity. Upon learning that and speaking with them, they deduced that he was indeed wrongfully arrested and started removing his handcuffs, but still found it necessary to justify their reason for detaining him. After wrapping up a few loose ends, they let Mr. Kugler go. According to the police report, he was furious about the mistake and demanded the badge numbers of the cops involved. However, Bank of America reached out to him and worked things out with them, allowing Mr. Kugler to move on and forget the whole situation. Be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.